Okay. So, um, these two are similar, but not the same, so that's okay. I do want to pick I wonder if, if we should use her on like the front cover, possibly make a pocket. Maybe that matches this one. Be a bit wider, because the cover's wider. <clears throat> okay, let's look at that. So she's, I don't think I have, oh, there. And we're gonna go six and an eighth by eight inches. And if I have to cut it a little shorter, we can do that. Okay. Here was well, gonna be lined up against this. And yeah, I'm gonna have to cut. I'm gonna have to cut maybe three Three sixteenths of an inch off of that. We'll go down to six inches first. I don't want to cut it too short. Line it up against this side. Yeah, that's close enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and take an eighth inch off the bottom. There we go. That's better. Better, better. Okay. <laughs> There's so many things that I want to do. So many projects I've started. I can't wait to finish. It just so much, so much to start on. And it's just getting in here. Not the desire to get in here, but um, because that's always there. But like, I ain't gonna work. But like, you know, just stopping other things that you, you know, responsibilities and stuff. Cleaning, like my house is a wreck right now. And I should not be doing this. I should be cleaning. You know, going to the gym. Which I am going to do. But still, it's like... Those things are for me. Those things are for myself. When do you feel like you shouldn't be doing things for yourself, but you should be doing things for other people? I have a, a struggle. Um... <laughs> I want to make I'm trying to make it interesting and usable but still only use my 6x6 six six papers um So, and, and my, my scraps here. So I wonder if I make like a small pocket at the bottom 
and then like a magnetic flap closure. That sounds kind of neat. Yeah, let's do that. Now, if I want the pockets to come off of the page so that you can utilize the full range of the pocket, I need to, this to be a little bigger, but I'm thinking this is just going to be something that we can slip paper underneath. And I'm still going to end up, if I use that size, I'll still end, oh no, that will work. I can use that as a six inch piece of paper. I like this one. Let's use this one. That one's weird to me. I think I'm going to use this one. So let's go ahead and put this down first because if I use that small piece for the pocket, it's, uh, we don't be able to slide things under it to mat them. Uh, so this is six or a five and three quarter pocket. My paper down to mat the edge. <clears throat> you can stub punch both edges if you want. Um, on your pattern paper, even if you don't have the corner stub punch, your base is black, so it'll kind of still give the same effect that it's punched. It'll be like just a dark shadow kind of deal. Okay, so um, another option here is to make all the backs the same. It makes it easier on you as far as deciding what to, what to do on the backs of these things. So let me do that. Let's look let's do this one, see how it turns out. And I just use glue all the way around so that if I stick tags in there it won't uh, one thing I forgot to do. That's okay. I'll deal with that in a minute. I should have not put that down yet because I want to put a flap over it, but we can work with that. Okay, and this one, unless I have a bit that fits, that's going to be another thing that I wait to mat um, so that I have... So that I use um, scraps. Uh, okay, so I was. It took me so long. I was thinking because I didn't. I didn't put my flap on this. Maybe I'll leave this one like this and do every other one like this and another one, the other ones have the, the flaps on it. How about that? Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. This is a fairly simple process, so let's just go ahead and do all of them. I have... These are all the right size. And they are cutoffs from something else. So these are two and a quarter. Oh, yep. So this, I need mean, six more of these at two and a quarter. Two, three, four, five. I 
have another. Yes, two and a quarter. I think I could have got two out of the bigger ones. That would have been the smart thing to do, but okay, whatever. Sometimes we just aren't. So I'm going to stub punch this corner here. And with these big We Are Memory Keepers things, you can stub punch them all at the same time. It's awesome. Okay. And then let's find... Seven more pieces of 6x6 six six that we want to use. Like that one. Um, I like this pattern. This one. Ooh, I like that solid. I want to use that on um, the closure. four, five, six, one more, and oh, that one, really like that one. Okay, so we're going to stub punch the corners of all these. And then I want, <clears throat> before I forget, four flaps. They don't have to cover the whole thing. And again, I have these wider. Ooh, how about these? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Okay. So these were already cut. Um, I think these are the ones that I messed up when I was doing the pockets. So I have a. These are seven and a half by five and a quarter. And on the back of the pages, they'll cover almost the whole thing. You'll have about a quarter inch on both sides. So I didn't want them to go all the way down the bottom because I wanted to use those two by two squares as like a closure like right here. So I think I'm just going to score them a little higher. I think I'm going to score them instead of a half inch, I'm going to score them at an inch. That'll solve the problem. Um, as far as bolt goes, it's not really going to add a whole lot. So they're seven and a half. I'm going to score them at six and a half. You can always cut it off if you want beforehand, but I just don't see the point. Six and a half. There we go. Six and a half. Okay. And then before I fold those, I'm going to stub punch the bottom corners. Just to keep consistency. So every other one will get a flap. And then I'm going to take the 2x2 two two cut aparts. And we're going to pick four. These are 3 by 4 or 2x3s. Uh, Um, they definitely have like a, a right side, so there would only be a couple that I could put at, uh, I wanted to use a diamond shape, but I don't think I, I don't think I can. We'll see. Okay, 
here. You know what this book would be neat for is a uh, like letters. Like if you get letters from people, all right. This scrap is perfect. It measures uh, two and a sixteenth. So I'm gonna do two and a sixteenth four times, and that will be my little blocks there. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the flaps on every other one, then I use the 6x6 six six paper, this is the correct sequencing here, I've got to stub punch this side, to match here. I guess I didn't have to stub punch it, but I don't know, I like it. Oh, let's just go ahead and glue it. I have to get my another glue out. I certainly don't see one over there. Maybe we won't glue it. Come on, glue. All right. I'm just going to use ATG tape. There's going to be another piece on top of this that is going to hold it down. Okay, line up with the top and center it. There we go. Skip one. Get to this one. Fold. Stub punch. Center. Skip one. And it's it's nice. Uh, I didn't think about it, but I do not want these flaps on the back or on the same pages as the uh, small pockets. They may get hung up. Center it. There we go. And skip. And this is the last one. So, um, I've said a couple different things, but while I'm thinking of it, I was thinking to myself that, uh, you know, why do I make mini albums? Because honestly, you guys, I don't use them. Uh, I have a couple that I have done and filled out, but for the most part, yeah, I don't use them. So, I guess the reason why I enjoy making them is because I just like making things, like starting off with raw materials, which in this case would be paper and chipboard and 
glue ink if you're using it and then coming out with like a finished product product that is uh, unique that's what I like about it Okay, so here we go. I just put these here. Let's do the remainder of the backs of the pages with these that I already cut. This is one of my favorites. I think I'm going to use this one on a page that uh, doesn't get covered with the flap. And then on these you don't have to distress that edge because it's covered so there we go. and I'm just lining up with the outside edge here. A little too wide so we need to take about a quarter inch off of that again you can cut if you turn over you may get a little um you may get a little glue on your cutter but I think it's the best you don't want to go down into the could stand like another 16th off I think let's see how oh that's okay okay there's that one we'll go ahead and put the pocket on I have I may have to go get some new glue here um, I have another one of those I think it's supposed to be that liquidy. I don't think it got frozen. I guess, I guess we'll see. See if it's actually going to stick because I've never had that experience with it being that liquidy. But while we're waiting, let's go ahead and do this one. Um, yeah, I need to take about a quarter inch off that one too. This is one of my favorite papers. It's like a bookshelf. Don't need to do the bottom. Okay, here. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Oh. 
Let's go. I'll do this one here in a minute. I'm just going to keep on. Um, let's see here. Oh. I'll wait to put the pockets on until I determine if that glue is working. If not, I'll get my other glue out. Um, yeah, my assumption is I'm going to have to take about a quarter inch off of all these. Which makes sense. I guess I didn't realize that I hadn't cut any down. Um, okay, so doing this, instead of doing this one page at a time, which I've done two, by doing this kind of throughout the album just a little bit at a time a couple things can happen one it's just easier faster because you're doing kind of multiple things um, kind of like you're bulk producing in bulk I guess is what I want to say the other thing is that if, let's say, I run out of paper, I get a little over ambitious and um, I don't have enough paper to finish, then I can get another collection and like just intersperse it, like it won't be all at the end of the book, if you know what I mean. Hopefully it's not too confusing to follow either. And like, you can do base pages and base pages, like, I got my base pages, which are just like the pockets. And then I'm adding to my base pages, um, like the back of them, right now with this. But that doesn't mean that's the only base page that you uh, that, that doesn't mean that that's going to be the finished page. Like you can add flaps, you can add pockets, um, frames, tags belly bands to any of these Very rarely do I create the same album twice. There's always something different about them. With the exception of those 4 by 4 albums that I did, which were kind of like just a, a speedy gift idea, because I did a lot of those that were all the same. But even then, I changed them up just a little bit. I did, uh, like, one that was all the same page. I did four different albums, all the same page. And the idea behind those were just kind of using up, like, four by six paper pads. I don't know about you, but for some reason, I have 
so many four by six paper pads uh, and eight and a half by 11 cardstock. But they were fun. I think I still have some more that are like cut and ready to put together. All right, let's go back to where the last thing I glued on to make sure that it's stuck. Yeah, see, that's not sticking. I wonder if my art glitter glue has been compromised. Like I said, I've not, uh, it's not been frozen. I mean, it's cool in my room, but it's not been frozen. I'm going to try one more with that, and then in the meantime, I'm going to go grab my other Scotch Quick Dry. And if it doesn't work, then we'll know we have to switch. Yeah, um, so Art Glitter Glue, you're not allowed to freeze it or ship it when it's freezing or whatever. It's kind of like a try it at your own risk because it's got temperature regulations on it. Scotch, I've never heard anything about. But this is quite a bit thinner so that you can use this really fine point. So let's let that sit. I'm going to go grab my other scotch just in case and I'll be back. Okay, I got my, myself some glue here. Um, note to self, or note to you, these lids kind of suck. So, this lid is, I have no idea how old, years and years old. For some reason, they stopped making them. And, <laughs> here we go. So I'll say, whoo! Pretty much all used up, but you can get the glue, so here we go. I'm glad that landed that way. And I don't use, I mean, too much glue. And there we go. Okay, so. The pockets are holding, so the glue is fine, just, this is very fast drying because it's thicker, but it goes on thicker, so keep that in mind. This, which I think Crystal just got in the store, if you use it after this, you'll be like, oh my god, it's not working, because there's more water in it, and it says right here, water-based, um, it takes longer to dry, but you get the benefit of having the very small point. So it depends on what you're doing. You know, what I'm doing right now doesn't require precision. So I'm going to go with the quicker drying adhesive, I think. Speaking of drying, let me put my distress pad back lid on. And this is going to go, you know, you're going to run out of this a little bit faster than the other because it, it puts a bigger bead down. So, yeah, just what, uh, what's more important, I guess. Nova's going to be a good girl and lay down here with mommy. Are you scrapbooking, Nova? Link used to scrapbook all the time. Link um, was one of two of my first great Pyrenees. And he was such a lovey-dovey dog. He was disabled. His back legs were bad from birth. He was the runt. But it makes me wonder now because King, his brother, I guess I should tell you the rest of the story. So Link died when he was three. 
seemingly of some kind of internal issue. Um, it shouldn't have been bloat because he had the tummy surgery for the bloat, so that shouldn't have been it. But regardless, um, he had some kind of internal issue and he died when he was three years old. But, uh, I'm missing one of these. He was disabled in his legs and now I'm wondering if it wasn't something genetic that just got him more because King has problems with his legs too. His feet actually, his back feet actually turn out like this when he walks and you can tell especially on his left that he is definitely suffering from uh, some sort of pain, <clears throat> joint pain maybe. I gotta make another one of these. And that's the right size. Five and three quarter. <laughs> so, yeah, I wonder. Um, I, I don't think that whatever uh, Link died from was related to his legs because it was definitely, you know, I was with him. Uh, it was unexpected, it was in the middle of the night. Uh, I thought he had hurt his legs, but it was something else. And I was actually just laying with him, so, but, uh, so yeah, King seems to be having leg issues. He is eight now. That's, um, it's not the oldest, but it's pretty old for a Great Pyrenees. He's going on eight. He's only seven. Um, and, yeah, so... And then, so we had King and Link at the same time, and then Link passed away, and we got Panda, who is a pretty good dog. She is, um, also, they're all Great Pyrenees. Once I found Great Pyrenees, I didn't, uh, didn't really desire to get anything else. Although, if I were to get another dog, because, um, as I get older, it's just harder, and, and as the dogs get older, they're harder to manage, so... Not that I would get one right now, because we have Nova, who's only not even two. But, uh, I'm 40 right now, so when Nova's 10, you know, I'm going to be over 50. And I don't know that I'll be able to lift or take care of a 130 plus pound dog when I'm 50 years old. So, having said that, um, I was looking at Samoyas. If I decide to get another dog, because I'm not fully convinced that that's what I want to do, I may, uh, at least while I'm still active and able, I may uh, go without for just a little while. And then when I get older and I'm not doing the things that, you know, traveling and stuff like that, maybe get a smaller dog. Not a really small dog because that's not my thing. <laughs> but, uh, like I was thinking like a Samoya, which is, I don't know, what is it, a 30, 30, 50 pound dog, something like that? Okay, so I got all that done. I need to mat these so I can put the closures on in the magnets before I'm at here so but before that I want to make sure that I have paper for this side so I need a, I need to cut a six by eight and these are the 12 by 12s I've already cut so far so it's Sunday these are pretty much cut apart, so I'm going to put those aside so I can cut them apart. Uh, I really like this. I think I'm going to cut... I think I want... I think I want to use this. Okay, let's use that. I was... It's Sunday. 
all my conversations hopefully will come full circle. <laughs> I know I start and then uh, drop off. Like I finish, I think, stories, but then I drop off and I may pick them up just a little bit later. But it's Sunday and I pretty much don't have anything to do. Like part of me is like, oh, you should probably go to the grocery store because uh, unlike a lot of places here in our little city, I still, we still have resources. The grocery stores are still, uh, have food. It's all the craziness. Yes, yes, I like that. And I'm going to take just a little bit off the top. And part of me is like, I should probably just go and get just some stuff, you know. But the other part of me is like, I don't really have to. So I'm not going to. Um, I emailed, or I texted my neighbor. And Tom texted the neighbors across from us. So those are really the only neighbors we have. Because we're out in the country. And said, hey. If you guys need anything, you know, I don't have a lot. I have, you know, regular food that I always have in the cupboard. Plus, I bought an extra, like, 10 pounds of rice. And, uh, I forgot that. Like, a huge bag of, like, marshmallow matey cereal. Which, I mean, that's not totally out of the ordinary either. And honestly, as far as the rice goes, I usually have minute rice, but all the minute rice was sold out. So I thought I'd try my hand at regular rice. And then I was considering a, like a rice cooker because I do use a lot of rice. But then I'm like, do I really want another thing on my countertop? I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to measure these guys here. These measure six and a half, so I'm going to have to use um, the 12 by 12s on this. So six and a half, and there's four of them, right? Yeah, so let's go ahead and put those on. These are going to be my closures for these really don't need closures that this would be fine without it this is not cut straight though um maybe i should put the magnet under there what do you think it's too late now maybe i don't need closures at all maybe i should just leave them like use that But not put a magnet on it. Nothing's going to fall out of this pocket. And it's not going to get in the way of anything. Oh, let me think about it. Okay. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and mat these. Uh, measuring. Did I say it's not measuring six and a half? It's measuring six and a quarter by five and a quarter. So, we need our 12 by 12 again. Okay, I don't necessarily need these, so this would be a good candidate. This is, uh, I will be cutting some of it off though, and I don't know that I want to cut that much off. Big text on the back of that. And then some cut aparts here that we can work into. Oh, 
some work into the design. Also some 2x2 two two squares here if we want to use them. Okay, so, oh, I just looked on Crystal's what, uh, ASC Supplies on Etsy, and they have the cardstock that I use, the Doris Coordinations cardstock, 20 sheets, the 12x12, I think it's 50 sheets of the 8 half by 11 on sale for three less than three dollars a pack so if you want that hard stock go get it <laughs> that's a good deal okay so let's use I need four I think I'll use this sheet um, five and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'm cutting it an eighth inch shorter. stub punch everywhere. I need to empty this, obviously. Okay. Stub punch it where everywhere else where it needs to be stub punched, and I'll pick out four more designs for these flaps. And in the meantime, ooh, let's talk about Great Pyrenees some more. <laughs> Back to that subject. So I love my Great Pyrenees. They are just the biggest cuddle bug babies ever. Um I get them groomed and uh, about once every three months uh, and I don't I don't typically brush them a whole lot I think I'm going to use this side of this uh, I do brush them but not like a lot it says, <clears throat> I read some stuff that says you're supposed to brush them about 30 minutes a week. I probably don't even do that. But if you get them groomed once every few months, then it's really okay. Uh, you don't want to leave them to the point where they uh, get all matted. So, so yeah, just brush them just a little bit and then... You don't want to get them matted, so grooming is a good idea because they get, they really get, you know, good and down in there and brushed and they're better at it than I am. They cut their toenails because you got to watch their toenails. They have two dew claws. Where is this stuff coming from? <laughs> they have two dew claws and um, the second one never hits the ground because it's for like mountain climbing and stuff you know like the Pyrenees mountains and uh, you can grow and curl oops I used the wrong punch you can curl and grow around into into the pad on the foot so you definitely want to not do that Then, hmm. yeah, so they take care of that too. And I am no good at trimming dog toenails. Like, I will tell you, I'm going to use this one. I think I'm going to use this. No, I'm just going to use this side for now. 
We have had many a bloody mess because we trimmed a toenail too short and they have some big toenails. So it bleeds for a really long time. It looks like a legit mass murder scene when you hit the quip of a Great Pyrenees toenail. Not the dew, I've never hit the dew claw because the dew claw is like huge. But we have hit one of the other ones, and like I said, horrible, horrible. So what I ended up doing when that happened is getting um, athlete athletes tape. Like it's kind of stretchy, and it's got it adheres to itself, but really not to the skin. So I got a sock and put a maxi pad in the bottom of the sock, put the sock on the dog, and used that tape so that it wouldn't stick to his fur. And it took quite a while to stop the bleeding, actually. So, um, I'm going to see what I probably won't use. Let's cut here, because I don't see me cutting around all these things. So I'm going to use, I think, here. So By six and an eight. So yeah, it's Sunday, I'm pretty happy because I don't have anything that I have to go do, like I have plenty of things that I should be doing, like cleaning my house. I'm also thinking I need to stock up on some adhesives and stuff, I guess I, ha I probably have enough. I was just thinking to myself, if we get quarantined or if you know work gets slow and I can't work um, I'll have lots of time to clean my house and to craft and to exercise at home but I don't know we'll see Let's we'll see what happens. Alrighty here. And these we'll just glue right on. So I cut them all at the same time. in the room. Okay. So I thought I'd craft a little bit and probably edit this video. Oh, I cut it too short. Or did I just make that one too long? No, I cut it too short. Dang. Did I cut these too short? How did I do that? And this is what happens. I was pretty sure I measured those each time. And I am a good half inch, quarter inch short. Alrighty then, and that's my, <laughs> that's my, uh, bummer. 
Okay, so plan B. I'm going to go ahead and use this because I don't have I don't want to waste it. I don't I don't want to waste my 12 by 12 so we'll do something with the bottom. We can either cut it off and repunch it. And we can add a strip. We can add a pocket. Lots of things we can do to that. I'm thinking I'm just going to cut it off. That's just the easiest thing to do. I could use my trimmer or an X-Acto knife. But I feel confident enough that this line will keep me straight. Perfect. There we go. Presto fixo. Like that. So one of them's gonna be just a tiny bit longer than the rest. I don't think anybody will notice. And this is why I love paper crafting. Had this been sewing, I would have probably had to like pull it all out and start over again. And I just can't deal with that. <laughs> see. Pretty straight. I'm happy with that. One more. Because somehow I got the first one right. talk about my dogs while I'm crafting apparently. Maybe when everything's already cut. Perfect. Alright, I'm not mad about that. Stuff happens. And we fix it and we move on. Get some of the Trimmings out here. Okay. Now, um, this one, did I? Okay, yeah, this one is the mate page to this, so let's map here. This is another one we have to use the 6x12 on. And how about. How about that? I kind of like that. Let's use this one. Let's measure twice this time. Um, we're just going to the end. So that's five and a quarter and all the way to the top by seven and a half. Okay, that looks good. Oh, the writing is going to be upside down. Oh, well. that's the way it was on the paper. Um, and then you measure here. That is five and three quarters. So you cut it. Since I'm going to put it like this, I'm going to cut it up at five and three quarters to minus an eighth of an inch, which is five and seven eight, or five and five eighths. Think about that. Okay, 
So this is going to be your little one at the top, and this is going to be at the bottom. Looks good. And then this one slides right down into that recess of that pocket. And I line it up with the top of So it's a continuation, and we'll see what we're going to stick in there here in a little bit. Um, let's look at the flaps and see what we want to do with these. Is this something that I want to put? I, I like the way it looks, so I'm going to say let's do it. So uh, I'm not going to put a magnet on it. If I want to add a magnet, I can add it to the back yet. Uh, it would be easier to do it before I actually glue it on, but whatever. Not because it, it would be easier to put the magnet on, but it would be easier to um, like mat the back of this little square. I just like the way it looks. Oops. And that's okay because I'm going to put paper over that. In the back, however, I'm not sure about. Okay. And how about this one? I'm just putting right on the back here last one here Oops. Okay, so yeah, I think that's nice there. <laughs> Nova's sleeping. She's being so good. Tom is talking to people from all around the world on the video game. He is being so loud. Okay. Now, I have two pages that are exactly the same. All the backs are exactly the same. And... We're intentionally not putting anything on the pockets or here yet because we're going to wait until we use all our paper. So let's do a page design for the next page. <clears throat> yes, let's do that.